In our previous video, we talked about zeros and multiplicities. Before we continue, I would like to share with you why it's important to understand these concepts. Ultimately, the items that we learn over the next collection of videos is going to result in our being able to create our own graphs of polynomial functions. With this in mind, let's go ahead and start now by taking a look at the graph of the function that we were, that we were working with a moment ago. You might recall that that function was f of x equals 0.004x squared times the factor x minus 3 times the factor x plus 6 cubed. I've entered this into the Desmos graphing calculator. Now, we already identified that there were three zeros, three roots, three x-intercepts. Remember, those are all just the same words for the same concepts. And we got the x values negative 6, 0, and 3. So if we look at this graph, we see that that is where the x-intercepts are located on our graph. But even more importantly than that, we can now examine the behavior of the graph at those locations. For example, take a look carefully here. In this part of the graph, at the x-intercept of negative 6, the red curve crosses the x-axis and keeps going. But at this part of the graph, at an x of 0, the red curve approaches the origin, touches it, and then bounces away. At this point over here, the x of 3, it crosses the x-axis and it keeps going. Is there some sort of pattern that tells us when our graph will cross an axis versus when a graph will touch and bounce away? The answer is yes. So let's now explore the idea of touches versus crosses. If a root or zero of a function is of even multiplicity, then the graph touches the x-axis there. If a root or zero of f of x is of odd multiplicity, then the graph crosses the x-axis there. So as a brief reminder, I'd like to point out that zero was the only root that we had with two as its multiplicity, which is an even number. Three and negative six were roots that had an odd multiplicity, one time and three times respectively. So based on this, we would expect that at our graph, for the even multiplicity of zero, we would expect that it touches and bounces away from the x-axis. So for the odd multiplicity of one and three, we would expect that it crosses. This is exactly what we observe. At zero, where the multiplicity was two, an even number, the red curve touches and bounces away. But at negative six, where the multiplicity was an odd number, and at positive three, where the multiplicity was an odd number, the red curve crosses the x-axis and keeps going. Now, how are we going to remember this? There are two methods that I'm going to share with you. The first is by repeating a phrase several times, even touches, odd crosses. Say it out loud to help you remember, even touches, odd crosses. In addition, if we can connect this to your previous learning, it will make it easier to remember. In a previous video, we learned about the library of functions y equals x squared is a parabola with a vertex at the origin. You can see that it has an x-intercept and that it touches and bounces away. Its exponent of 2 is an even number, even touches. In that same video series, we also discussed the cube function, which also has an x-intercept at 0, but this function crosses the x-axis and keeps going, Notice that the exponent on x cubed is odd. So, even touches, odd crosses. 